Hi friends, I've been fit with Laura on this very, very beautiful day. Let's talk about the workout. The first thing we do is get our necessary positive mental attitude. We clean up the debris in our minds. I'm talking about the resentment, the unforgiveness, the jealousy, the comparison, the critical voice that we carry about ourselves, about others. We decide, I will not criticize, curse, condemn, or compare, or negatively compete. I will not worship myself. I will not worship others, people, places, or things. I will not worship my feelings. I will worship the living God. It doesn't matter if we are wealthy, if we have the best job that we could possibly want, uh, everything our hearts could desire, if we have a lousy, stinking mental attitude. I don't know if you've met people who seem to have it all, but their attitude is really bad. I've met a lot of people like that. So let's get our attitude on straight first. Now I'm going to talk about the workout. The workout, I'm keeping it simple. I feel very tired today, so I'm going to work out anyway, but I'm not going to injure myself. Warm up around this field, two laps around this field. Then I do a circuit on the picnic tables. I do, I will do five single leg step ups. Then I will run around the picnic tables, get back to this next uh, table. I will do um, five push-ups, slow push-ups, holding that, holding that plank position, sucking in that core. Then I run to these parking benches, and I do five side to si five side lunges, left and right is count one. Then I do five, excuse me, 10 soccer hops. Repeat four times. So to reiterate, warm up, get our mental attitude in check, warm up our body. And then we do five single leg step up, five uh, push ups, slow, holding in that core, five side to side hop on the bench. Uh, five side to side lunge, standing tall, and then 20 soccer hops, repeat four times. So I'm ba we are basically working the plank. We always want to work the gut. We're working the large leg muscles in the body, the quads, the hamstrings. We are standing tall as we are running. We're not sh shuffling around like ogres. We are pushing the ground behind us. We take pride in our appearance. We are not narcissistic. We are not exercising to get to be attention grabbers. We are exercising so that we can feel well. We can have a positive mental attitude so that we can be most productive at our jobs. We can be better friends, better spouses. And exercise um, is the least utilized, most effective antidepressant. That's a fact. Junk food and stuffing ourselves with junk food is the most utilized, least effective antidepressant. Let me say that again. Exercise, consistent exercise, is the most effective, least utilized antidepressant. We get oxygen into our brain. We are exercising our heart. We are getting our heart going. We are feeling better. After our workout, junk food and overeating, smoking and drinking, uh, our addictions to food, our addictions to alcohol are the most utilized, least effective antidepressant. Instead of running to food, many of us food, have food addictions. I know I have. I used to come home from work and have a bowl of raisin bran then eat a giant bag of popcorn in front of the TV. Um, when we do that, we are doing a disservice to ourselves. We are accumulating a lot of fat carbohydrates before dinner, and then we are um, gradually and slowly accumulating, get out of the, <laughs> accumulating fat around the gut. So we must change what we do if we want something different. So 
I'll repeat, we ch if we want something different, we change what we do. We don't keep doing the same thing. If we want a more peaceful life, we take a step back and take a look at what we are worshiping. I don't care what anyone says, we are all worshiping a God. Those are my friends that say they don't believe in Jesus, they're atheistic, atheist or agnostic. You are worshiping something. What are you worshiping? Are you worshiping yourself? Are you worshiping money? Are you worshiping your circle of friends? Are you worshiping your feelings of depression? Poor pitiful me. Are you worshiping what you see as problems? Let's step out of the little me bubble and take a step back and ask ourselves, how is that working for us? I'd like us all to realize that this world is a big, beautiful place, and there are so many opportunities for us to bless other people, if and only if we step out of the little me bubble and get our mind off ourselves. So number one, we want physical exercise. Number two, we take a step back and ask ourselves, what are we worshiping? I know a lot of people uh, who worship themselves, worship feelings of depression, poor pitiful me. You will know because of what they talk about. I know a lot of people who are so self-absorbed. After my mom passed away in March, uh, it was very striking to me to realize most people are so self-absorbed and they're, they live in the little me bubble and their world is so small. They're unable to even say, I'm sorry for your loss. You will know what people worship by what they talk about. You'll know who your friends are if you have a catastrophic loss, like the loss of a parent, the loss of a job, and they're still babbling on about themselves and it, their conversation is 100% self-focused. Let's not be that way. Let's use our unpleasant experiences with people, the clumsy and self-centered people in this world, I'm certainly not perfect, but I am very different than who I used to be. Let's use our discomfort, our uncomfortable experience with people to not be that way. When I have an unpleasant interaction with someone, I decide to myself, thank you for being a great teacher and how I never want to make another person feel. So every experience can be our teacher, every clumsy, rude, narcissistic person can be our teacher of how not to be. <laughs> we see our lives as sacred. We are grateful for our lives. We decide to step out of the little me bubble and think about other people. This world is a big, beautiful world and we all have a purpose and our purpose must never be to be self-absorbed, narcissistic, poor pitiful me, focused on the minutiae details of our lives. Our purpose must be to make this world a better place. How do we make this world a better place? That sounds really vague, make this world a better place. I make this world a better place by listening and offering a listening ear, love and listening to people who need a friend. We can make this world a better place one person at a time, one interaction at a time by keeping our mind off ourselves, stop having the pity party picnic for one, fire a babysitter, grow the heck up, put on our big girl and big boy pants, and take responsibility for our own joy. We are not people pleasers. We are not people pleasers. We are, we have a bigger purpose. We are God pleasers. People are very fickle. People can be very flaky. If we are people pleasers and we sacrifice who we truly are to be in a clique and that clique changes, people are very changeable and can be very flaky. So we are never to depend on people, even those who we consider good friends, for our saneness, for our serenity, because they are changeable. We're all flawed. I'm certainly very flawed. But I have changed quite a bit in the last, I would say, decade or five years especially, when I realized that my misery was self-imposed. My misery came from uh, putting on a pedestal people, places, or things. People are simply human. They have their own agenda. I put prestigious jobs on a pedestal. And then when I 
didn't get the job. I was devastated. I put people with high position in jobs on a pedestal. People are simply people. We're all human. We are never to put on a pedestal people. We are staying stable, serene, and strong, not because of what people do, but in spite of. So I repeat myself a lot because I want my friends to have peace. I want my friends to get to the other side of that dark tunnel. I was in a dark tunnel for many, I would say four or five years because of putting people on a pedestal, of practically worshiping um, laboratory jobs, of thinking, if only this, if only that. If only I could get a really great job, then I'll be happy. We are happy now. <clears throat> we forgive now. We are at peace now. We ask God every day, what is my purpose today? How can I best make this world a better place by offering love and listening to another person? Our happiness and our joy never depends on another person or a job because those things are very changeable. Let me say again, our joy never depends on a job or on a relationship because those things can change in an instant. You've heard of people going postal if they get laid off, going crazy. We stay sane, stable, serene, and strong in the midst of drastic change. And we take note of how people act when we are in the midst of loss. We are not disappointed. It is information people are giving us about themselves. So when my mom passed away, people I thought were my friends were still very much all about them. And it was a shocking wake-up call for me to realize that the sadness of how uh, we rely on people when there is a traumatic loss and they are basically all about them. Let's go to our favorite places. Let's continue to visit those favorite places and make beautiful new memories for ourselves because it is, it is our memories we make that create the quality of our lives. I've said a lot today. A lot of it is repeat of what I teach. See the river behind me. Let's go to our favorite places and make good memories, beautiful memories. Not because our situation is idyllic, but in spite of. Let's get our exercise. Let's eat our one ingredient foods. Let's not worship ourselves. It can get pretty boring. Let's have a blank slate today. A blank slate. We do not carry around all the garbage from yesterday. Lord, I will not live in want today. I will not criticize, curse, condemn, or compare. I will worship you only and I will be grateful for my life. And I will never, never, never hold on to unforgiveness or resentment. I will drop that down because that is a heavy burden to carry. Have a great day with me, Living Fit with Laura. To get and stay, staying stable, serene, and strong. I'm proud of you. Keep it up.